As a student you are usually required to do a lot of reading in a very short period of time and I know it can be overwhelming. So in this video I want to talk about uh, how to uh, read uh, lots of academic articles, academic research papers uh, and how to do it effectively, how to actually uh, remember uh, what you have uh, read about. So uh, apart from uh, talking about which parts of academic articles you should focus on when reading as well as uh, which reading strategies to implement such as scanning uh, and skimming I'll also talk about certain uh, writing uh, techniques, writing strategies uh, that you should implement in addition to your reading. So it's very important that you stick to the end of this, this video in order to make sense of, of the whole uh, advice that I want to give you. So the very first thing to consider and uh, arguably the most important thing to remember about if you want to read effectively uh, is uh, to be absolutely clear about the purpose of your reading. What is it exactly that you're hoping uh, to get from all this reading? And uh, what I mean here in particular is that uh, there are many different purposes, especially uh, depending on which stage of your, uh, for example, dissertation writing you're currently at. So you may, for example, uh, want to uh, just read a lot of materials and understand uh, as much as possible about a given field, which is usually the case, and this is also something I will discuss in this video. Uh, but then you may uh, actually, you may have read already uh, a lot of literature, you may have an idea of, uh, of what's happening in this uh, given field, but maybe you're just uh, looking for this additional information that will show you uh, where the gap in research is or where the gap in knowledge is. So, uh, so you have a, a very general idea of, of the field or maybe of what you want to investigate, but you're still looking for that one particular element, something that has not been uh, researched widely, so something that you are hoping to address with your study. So basically, depending on this purpose, depending on what you are hoping to achieve, uh, your reading strategies uh, will differ. So uh, there are scanning and skimming, probably the most uh, popular and the most common reading strategies. So scanning is uh, scanning the text for particular information, so you're looking for a specific detail. And skimming is just uh, quickly going over the whole text, so, uh, so as to, uh, to get the, the whole, the general information from this text. And depending on, on what you're looking for in that uh, literature, uh, you will implement uh, reading and scanning to certain uh, parts of an academic article. Uh, so, for example, if you are, as I said uh, before, if you are uh, more or less familiar with the field, uh, even more or less, uh, you have this uh, more or less clear idea of what you want to investigate, but still looking for this very specific idea for what exactly or maybe what uh, which group of participants to investigate, uh, then I always recommend that you should probably uh, focus a lot of attention on the final uh, parts of a research paper uh, that usually either conclusion or further research as well as limitations. So uh, these parts usually, uh, the reason they are valuable to you if, if that's uh, the case, if you're looking for this uh, information for what exactly to address in your study, is that uh, these parts of academic articles usually quite explicitly talk about uh, what else needs to be done. So, of course, if, if uh, the authors talk about future research, they usually say, we have done this and that, but in the future, what still needs to be done is, is that, this kind of study. Uh, same way, if you're uh, reading the limitations section, in the limitations section, of course, they talk about uh, the ways their study could be improved. So, they are aware of certain limitations, and they are suggest, uh, suggesting certain improvements. So, again, this is a signal for you that perhaps uh, this is exactly what your study uh, will address, how your study will address a given issue. So, so if uh, the author of this article is saying that, uh, that for example, uh, the limitation of their study was a uh, small sample size, perhaps you can uh, think about uh, planning a study with a larger sam a sample size. Or if somebody says the limitation was that they addressed uh, the issue only from the quantitative perspective, so through the questionnaire, but it would be beneficial to uh, to actually talk to participants. Perhaps this is uh, a signal uh, for you to consider 
uh, carrying out a study based on interviews. So you should definitely pay a lot of attention, I would say uh, focus uh, most of your attention on these concluding sections if this is the case. If you are uh, trying to understand how exactly, uh, how exactly to plan your study, uh, certain very specific, uh, trying to make uh, very specific uh, decisions uh, in terms of your maybe methodology or sample or something else. But then uh, this is not to say that you should not read the rest of the article. Most of the article I, I recommend that you uh, skim through. So like I said, just a quick look through the article, through all the sections. So you should still read it, but uh, this is just what I'm trying to say is that you shouldn't uh, pay too much attention. You shouldn't waste too much time on reading every single section in detail because uh, you may not need, for example, a very detailed explanation of what they did in terms of statistical procedures. And if you're not aware of it, if you're not uh, planning your reading like that, you may waste a lot of time, you know, 15 minutes just trying to understand the, the test that uh, they applied to their uh, their data. But maybe at the moment you just simply don't need it. So, so like I said, you should uh, plan which parts of the article you're just going to skim through and which parts to focus on. So like I said, you're focusing on the uh, the final concluding sections, you're skimming through most of the article, and I would also recommend scanning the literature review section for uh, specific details, for what uh, exactly you're interested in at the moment. So at the moment, as I said, you're interested in finding a gap, in under understanding what needs to be done, what hasn't been done uh, in this field. And as you know, the literature review reviews uh, a lot of literature, a lot of previous studies, and quite often when they do so, they also explain what the current gap in knowledge is. Quite often uh, they say it, uh, say it in the context of their own study, so they are explaining that their own study attempts to fill this certain gap, and while doing so they are explaining what the gap is. So like I said, you are scanning this uh, section of the article uh, for information uh, related to uh, certain gaps and in, in research, certain gaps uh, in knowledge. Uh, now imagine a different situation. So now you are uh, even further, you know what you want to do with your study, but you're still uh, not sure about your methods or maybe you're uh, looking for uh, the literature that justifies uh, a given sample size or maybe the use of a specific method or specific procedure. So in this case, of course, you will mainly uh, skim through uh, the whole article, uh, but you will uh, scan uh, the uh, the, uh, the methodology section for specific information that you're looking for. So you will be scanning, for example, for whenever they uh, talk about uh, interviews or sample size. Uh, and the same will refer to the literature review, because again, the literature review talks about previous research. You will also want to read it, but this time, sc rather than scanning for uh, information related to research gap, you will be scanning for anything that has to do with methods. So maybe you want to see uh, what methods have been used in the past in this kind of studies. And this is very important because of course, uh, when you talk about your own study, you usually want to relate it to what has been done previously and which in which ways uh, this has been achieved. So, so this time you will be scanning for whenever they say that in the past uh, these people conducted, you know, 30 interviews, uh, these people uh, conducted a questionnaire study. So, so while uh, the authors are reviewing the literature, they pretty much every time they talk about, they give some details of uh, the studies they are reviewing, so of, of the methods that have been used. And of course, uh, as you are scanning the literature review for that information, uh, whether you are looking for information regarding methodology or or the or the research uh, gap or gap in in knowledge, of course, as you see the descriptions of the articles that uh, interest you or are very relevant to what you want to do, of course, you may check the reference list at the end and then uh, gain direct access to this article, and then perhaps you want to read it in more detail if it's very re relevant to what uh, you're uh, trying to investigate or talk about. And finally, and this I believe is quite often the case with students, uh, perhaps you have no idea what you want to investigate. You, you may have some uh, very vague idea of what kind of field you're interested in, but you really don't know what to do, what to investigate, uh, what kind of people to talk to, and you know what the aim of your study would be. So uh, in this situation, and I believe, like I said, it's usually 
the case because when you start a study when you're a master's student and you're expected to uh, conduct research or even when you're at PhD level uh, the first thing that you are required to do is to familiarize yourself with the literature and there is plenty of literature and uh, this is probably the most difficult and most overwhelming part of working on on either a master's dissertation or PhD research because it's just overwhelming there's so much to read uh, so again uh, so how to approach uh, this situation here of course as you may have guessed uh, the methodology sections or or the remaining sections may not be that important so you may again just briefly skim through these sections uh, but what is very important at this stage is definitely the literature review section and I'm sure you understand why because the literature review section talks about uh, not just the research that has been done but it also uh, discusses this broader context uh, in the field so basically uh, what people believe or what people agree about or disagree about you know what kind of debates exist in this field so this is very very important to to understand basically you want to explore this field in as much detail as possible so so you want to uh, read uh, the literature review section very carefully this will be your definitely your main focus so uh, you could probably even get away without reading the remaining sections uh, as I said I don't really recommend ignoring the remaining sections but you may either uh, quickly skim through them or like I said even in some cases just uh, ignore them but you should definitely not ignore the literature review section uh, also in the literature review section what is important is that you'll understand uh, certain terms so uh, you know professional terminology uh, that is being used uh, because sometimes when you start you don't even know what to look for you don't even know how to type how to search uh, certain uh, you know certain articles that interest you because you're not using these professional terms but the more you read the more you start to understand these terms you also st start to understand uh, what kind of concepts are crucial for discussing what you want to focus on so uh, to give you an example if you're interested in identity or learner identity you will definitely come across uh, the topics of motivation the topic of self-esteem self-confidence so as you read, as you explore these literature review sections, you will uh, understand more and more about additional topics that uh, inevitably you're going to have to uh, gain some understanding of. So again, just to summarize this reading, uh, reading part, because I also want to talk about writing in a minute, and it's very, very important that you uh, watch that part as well. But to summarize the reading part, it's absolutely crucial that you understand uh, why you're reading uh, these articles what exactly you are looking for because uh, doing so understanding uh, these purposes of reading will enable you to plan the reading accordingly so to plan which sections you are mostly interested in uh, to plan which sections perhaps you can uh, simply skim through and by doing so you will uh, save plenty of time as I explained before you're not gonna waste uh, your time and energy on reading things that are simply not relevant at the moment then of course as you come across a study that is super relevant and super interesting you will eventually read you know whole articles uh, in, uh, in very much uh, with very much detail but uh, in the initial stages is simply uh, most of the times it's simply not needed and now with regard to writing as I said this part is extremely important uh, and without it you'll uh, most likely start to forget things forget what you have been reading about so uh, no matter no matter what you think at the moment maybe you have already read 30 articles and you kind of remember what they were about eventually you will start to forget uh, important details so it's absolutely crucial in order to read effectively so that you can later utilize what you have read about it's very very important to do some writing as well and uh, in terms of writing what I usually recommend is to uh, create a separate Microsoft Word file for every article that you read so in that file uh, basically there are several uses for that file so firstly uh, remember when I said you will be uh, skimming through the whole article so you want to record the most important information uh, from each article in that file so even if at the moment you're not focusing on uh, research methods for example uh, you want to at least mention what kind of methods they used in this study and you, most of the times you'll find this information in the abstract of each article so 
what I usually do, I look at the abstract and I just copy and paste the most important things. So I, so I copy and paste, for example, the mention of the methods and I copy and paste a sentence or two where, where they talk about their main findings. So this is already in the future as I you know, have 50 or 100 of these files. Once I open this Microsoft Word file, I'll briefly, quickly check uh, the first two sentences in that file and they will tell me what kind of methods they used and what their main findings were. But apart from that, and that's probably the most important reason I like to keep this separate uh, Word file, is that uh, whenever I read something that is very relevant, is uh, you know exactly what I was looking for, I copy and paste it into this file as well. So as I read the literature review, for example, I will copy and paste uh, any sentences that I believe are important. So again, to use uh, uh, the, the example of identity, as this is something I have investigated a lot, uh, if I find a, an interesting, you know, a sentence that says identity uh, has been agreed by many researchers to be something very flexible and dynamic and then it has some references of course in the brackets uh, I will copy and paste it into my file and I will put indicate the page number where I found it in that in that PDF file in that article uh, so uh, this will be very important for the future so again as I have 30 or 50 or 100 of these files I'll uh, briefly I'll open each of these files and I'll straight away see what was interesting. I won't have to go back to reading the whole uh, the whole article again. And if I'm reading the whole article and pay, paying attention to uh, all the details, then of course I'll, I'll also put uh, copy and paste these details as well. And quite often uh, at the top of each extract that I copied and pasted, I sometimes make a note to myself in brackets saying why it's important. Because again, uh, you may feel like you will never forget that, but you will probably forget that very soon, in fact. So uh, so I like to indicate in brackets why I have it here in the first place. So I say, for example, this is a very clear definition of identity, or I say this is a good example of, uh, of how to use a certain method, or uh, this is a good justification for, you know, for small sample size or whatever. So whenever I find something that I feel is important in some way, I will copy and paste it there. And of course, as you can imagine, uh, the further I am in the process, uh, the more selective I'm being. So the less, uh, the less bits I will copy and paste because I'm looking for a very specific information. But in the initial stages where I'm generally trying to understand this given field or make sense of what has been done before, of course, there will be much more extracts because I will be copying and pasting everything that I, I believe is quite interesting uh, as I'm trying to develop my own interests and my own uh, the direction for my own research. But even if you do that, if you copy and paste whole bits of paper, sometimes the whole page, in fact, it's still better, it's still more economic uh, and it will save you time uh, because you still don't have to read the whole article. Finally, uh, in addition uh, to these files, what I usually eventually do, I start to create new files, new Microsoft Word files that I organize thematically. So I don't organize them by the author, but I have a uh, files organized thematically. So for example, a whole file that has all the extracts about uh, interview as a method from all the articles that I read. And then from all these individual text files where I, where I keep my notes for individual separate articles, I will copy and paste all the extracts about this interviewing as a method into this one file. And I'll do the same for any other topics or themes that I need. If you want to know more about, uh, about this method, I actually talk about it uh, in my other video in which I talk about how to do uh, your literature review quickly. So in that video I, I, I explain in a little bit more detail uh, this process of writing and copying and pasting into separate files. So I believe that's all on the topic of how to read academic papers effectively. Uh, if you have any questions do not hesitate to uh, ask them in the comments. Uh, also I would love to hear about your strategies. If you have some techniques or strategies that you're using I would love to hear about them, so again, uh, describe these techniques in the comments for everyone to see. And as always, if you're new to this channel, consider subscribing. Uh, this channel is mainly about uh, helping you develop and conduct a study that will make an impact, but I also do talk quite a lot about uh, studying tips. And of course, if you enjoy this content, like the video as well.